Hi, Maria here. Welcome to my channel. Today I am going to do a QA. and a uh, A few weeks ago I asked you guys uh, to ask me some questions and you came through and you asked them and so I'm going to answer uh, the ones that I received and I hope that you enjoy this. If you haven't subscribed, just go ahead and hit that button. Join the weird and wonderful family. I would love to have you part of the community. And without further ado, let's get into the question asking, shall we? Yes, we shall. <laughs> so the first question is, do you believe in soulmates? Um, to me, that term is so ambiguous. So um, I would probably tend to look at the fact that I think that people uh, can be deeply connected uh, through especially their belief system, uh, in particular spirituality, uh, can bring people into a place of connection uh, that you don't get otherwise. Uh, the spirituality, I think, uh, creates a deeper level of intimacy uh, between two people. Um, or maybe I could put it uh, if they have uh, similar goals or values, uh, that they can, uh, the connection can go deeper and be a little stronger. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so like soulmates, like star-crossed lovers, like that kind of thing, uh, that to me is a little bit more romantic uh, rather than realistic. Um, I do think though that you can cultivate uh, deep connection with people um, where those bonds aren't easily broken. Um, yeah, I, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> uh, okay, next question. What is the worst perfume you've ever smelled? Definitely, I'm gonna have to, like, like there, there's lots of cheapy type per fragrances that I'm like not crazy about, the, but the one that's given me the most visceral response is one that many people like, and it is Black Orchid by Tom Ford. I've said it before, to me, it smells kind of like death, like it's about as indolic as they come. And so I just imagine like uh, the undead wearing it. <laughs> like, no offense. My guess is if I smell it on you, I would think it was beautiful. But when I smell it, all I can think of is zombies, like a zombie with like a, a dark black orchid in, in their hair and the smell of all of that. <clears throat> and the smell of all of that being the smell that I smell when I smell black orchid. So yeah, don't like it. Do you have certain perfume houses that you stay away from? Uh, and, and she kind of goes on to say, you know, it seems like some houses have similar, like all their perfumes have a DNA that kind of runs through them. So a, a perfect example is Mansara. Like if you've smelt a Mansara or a couple Manseras, there's a certain vibe to all the fragrances, even though they smell different. So for me, probably the line that I am least interested in is uh, Versace. So I I have one, I've got two uh, Versaces um, and they're okay, but they don't like crank my jets. So it wouldn't be like I'd be buying a full huge bottle of them or anything like that. And I've yet to smell a Versace that I just really love. So. Uh, definitely uh, the Versace line just doesn't appeal to me overly. Next question is what makeup do you use? I wasn't sure if you were meaning foundation or just regular makeup, uh, but for my foundation I use uh, two different ones. Uh, depends on my mood in the day. The first one is CoverGirl True Blend Matte Made Foundation and this is in L20. Uh, I'm really really fair so L20 for that and then I also love the L'Oreal Infallible 24 hour fresh wear foundation and this one is in 405 porcelain so those are my two favorite foundations I've had I've used high-end foundations and honestly I find that these perform phenomenally so these are my favorite as far as other products are concerned uh, I leave a list linked down below, uh, or like in the description bar, there's a list of kind of all my frequently worn uh, makeup items. Um, as far as eye palettes, I use everything under the sun. I prefer uh, higher end uh, eyeshadow palettes. 
Um, yeah, uh, I, I hope that answers your question. If you do have more questions about my makeup, let me know. The next question is, would you please do an ASMR perfume video? Um, no, no, I won't do one. <laughs> I, they creep me out. Um, <laughs> Uh, no, I won't do an ASMR video. This is as much as you're gonna get from me. <laughs> uh, yeah, they kind of creep me out. Um, I totally appreciate people find them relaxing, but the biggest thing is I don't have the, I don't have the, um, the capabilities. Like I don't have an external mic uh, as of yet. So at this juncture, no, I won't. But you never know in the future. Are you dating or married? If not, are you open to it? I am married. I've been married for 28 years uh, to the same dude. <laughs> and yeah, so at this point, I am not single. <laughs> uh, what are your hobbies besides fragrance? Um, I would say probably um, I really love interior decorating and uh, like refinishing stuff, doing home projects really enjoy that. I also enjoy music, uh, you know, playing instruments and singing and that sort of thing. Yeah, haven't done a whole lot of that over the past little while, but I definitely really enjoy that. What do you do for self-care? I, like, I, I think that the thing that I do the most for self-care, honestly, is try to be in the present and enjoy the moment. <laughs> So like, you know, you're going through your day, but there's always times, things like uh, the sun is shining in your window as you're driving in the car. I try to really, like, I try to really extract that moment uh, and enjoy it, like allow it to kind of penetrate my being, so to speak, uh, and, and be thankful. So, you know, I'll have an experience like that and I always go, thank you, God. Like, thank you so much for uh, this moment of like somehow joy. So it could be just driving in the car, listening to music, or it could be, uh, you know, something that I look at in my house that makes me happy, just something like that. And I always just kind of try to go and suck up the moment of, of joy or peace or whatever it is that that is, is kind of, uh, you know, whatever the moment is holding or the vibe is holding, I try to kind of suck it up and say, thank you, God, for this moment. Like I, uh, thank you for, thank you for my home. Thank you for warmth. Thank you for sunshine. Uh, thank you for joy. Like, you know, just whatever it is in that little moment. Thank you for, uh, thank you that I got to see like that little girl run over to her mom or whatever it is. So I would say that's the most helpful for me is just really being in the present as much as possible and enjoying every moment uh, that comes my way. Anything that I can enjoy, I try to enjoy uh, because there's a lot going on in the world and uh, in my own life that's stressful or a struggle. But if I just kind of enjoy that moment, I feel like it really fuels me. The other thing that I would say I do for self-care is definitely, uh, um, it's what's called devotional prayer. So I will read a portion of the Bible and then just kind of meditate like a small portion, like a teeny piece and uh, just meditate on it and kind of go, okay, God, what are you trying to say to me personally? in this little passage. And so it's kind of like a little dialogue and I find that oftentimes uh, God just speaks to my heart about specific things that are going on for me through the Bible. Um, yeah, I find that it's one of the most rejuvenating things that gives me hope. So uh, yeah, hope that answers your question. Another question was, did I miss the video on these new glasses? Love, love, love them. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yes, you missed the video. It's it's uh, a while back, kind of in the summer. I got two new pairs of glasses. These are the one pair and I absolutely love, love, love them as well. Um, I will leave that video linked down below. So another question was, uh, what are the hair products that you're using for your silver hair? I'm using the Paul Mitchell line, Lavender Mint. Uh, it's the Tea Tree line by Paul, Paul Mitchell. 
and it's laver lavender mint moisturizing shampoo and conditioner I'm using uh, so I use that kind of on the regular uh, basically it's really moisturizing but it also smells really good and it's less expensive than my unite seven seconds uh, products which I love but they're just so pricey and then to tone uh, the silver I use uh, from easy color lover dynamic blonde I'm not crazy about this uh, it's, it's super potent though so if you really want like toned hair uh, so you want to take out the brassiness or anything like that this one is phenomenal but it's quite drying so and it's really really um, like it's really purple so I uh, like because my hair is so white in places like I don't know like I don't know if it shows up on camera but some of my hair is so so white that I find that putting the purple on uh, straight just turns it lavender <laughs> like my hair will go purple and so I usually mix it in with my regular shampoo uh, when I run out of this I'm gonna try something else because I'm not in love with this product uh, and then yeah as far as styling products are concerned I use primarily the Unite line just because I think it's amazing uh, the oil that they have it's um, it's uh, clear. The clear oils are definitely better than anything that has yellow in it uh, because again, my hair is so white. So those are the products I use. I'll leave everything linked down below. Uh, what's the best way to learn how to recognize notes in perfume? First of all, you can actually buy kits that have the notes in. I If I can find uh, the link of that product I'll leave it linked down below too so you can get like kits that have single notes in them which to me I'd like to get one of those um, the way that I recognize them is that I've smelt so many fragrances you know obviously there's some scents that I know such as you know vanilla cinnamon uh, things like that uh, I've studied a lot on Fragrantica paying attention to kind of the nuances of different notes uh, but then as you smell fragrances, you start to pick them up. So uh, definitely smell tuberose. Uh, you know, I can definitely tell tuberose, let's say, from a rose. Um, you know, so as you smell fragrances and kind of study the notes, for me, that's kind of primarily how I've done it. Um, and then obviously the things that I've smelt in life where, okay, I know that's lemon, I know that's bergamot. Uh, I have quite a few essential oils as well. Uh, which helps as far as being able to differentiate notes. Um, if you guys ever want an essential oil video, I would be more than willing to do that. I love mixing and uh, coming up with concoctions for diffuser blends for my diffuser. So if you guys ever want something like that, let me know. If you could add three bottles to your collection of any three perfumes you wanted, modern, vintage, regardless of the price or availability, what three would you pick? Um, I think that I would like to have Ralph Lauren, uh, like the Lauren perfume. I think you can still get it. I haven't bothered because I want stuff that's, you know, more whatever. But if I could have that one in my collection, I would because that's what I wore on my wedding day. Uh, so at some point I'll probably buy a bottle or at least I want to sniff it because <laughs> I totally don't remember what it was like. Um, so that would be one. Um, I am wanting, uh, Santal Royale by Guerlain. Uh, definitely want that one. I also really want Honey Oud. Uh, those are the ones I'm really wanting right now. Um, I'm new enough to the whole perfume game that I haven't sniffed tons of niche. There's quite a few fragrances that are on my list that I'm planning on getting. Uh, so yeah, is what three brands or perfume houses would you like to either try for the first time or acquire more perfumes from? Um, uh, Chanel is definitely one that I'd like to acquire more perfumes from. I'd also like to try uh, Roja. Um, I'd like to try um, also Initio. Um, are there any others? Of course, Perfume de Marley. I want some from that. Um, Amouage, uh, House of Siage. So there's quite a few. Uh, Zerjoff, definitely interested in those so quite a few that I am really excited to try out MFK like like all kind of the the popular niche houses I really want to try if you could create a perfume that best represents you your life your personality and your essence describe and tell us about that perfume what would its family accords and scent profile be 
what key notes would you have uh, to be included in the fragrance and what would you name it? Those are fantastic questions. That's, that's a huge question. So um, the fragrances that kind of do it for me the most are warm, spicy fragrances. Uh, definitely would have cinnamon, tobacco, and rum <laughs> or some sort of liquor. So those three notes would be in my fragrance. I would also have likely jasmine in there as uh, one of the florals. I'd say that's my favorite. Either that or rose uh, would be in there. Um, what would I name it? <laughs> I have no idea, like, elixir for life, like, <laughs> uh, I don't know, I'm not sure, I guess we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, but uh, somehow elixir, I think would have to, elixir would have to be in there, um, yeah, Maria's elixir, I don't know, <laughs> I'm not sure why I'm so stuck on the elixir business, but uh, yeah, I don't know, essence? <laughs> Essence de Maria. Yeah, no clue on the name. In, in regards to whether tobacco, rum, and that sort of thing uh, suits my personality or fits my life, uh, literally, probably not. Like, I'm not a smoker. I, I'm not overly, you know, into drinking. Like, I don't mind the odd drink, but, uh, you know, it's not my thing necessarily. <laughs> but I just love the vibe that that gives me like I think old world uh romantic um if it it like I I'd have to create a perfume that gives me a vibe like tobacco vanille where or noir pour femme or any of those fragrances where I instantly am transported into a scene of some sort that for me like I love when perfume transports me to some sort of scenario whatever it is so if it does that it's a love for me so that it would definitely have to do that on an off note i tried to make my own perfume like just a little vial using like essential oils and different stuff like that it was horrific <laughs> like it was so stinky so like and i let it macerate and everything i'm like oh man this is nasty so uh essence de maria is definitely gonna have to smell better than my first attempt uh but i i think it would be really really fun to be able to work with an actual perfumer uh to create something fantastic and i do enjoy that aspect of fragrance uh, next question is what are the most desired fragrances on your wish list um i kind of touched on it uh i want herod uh santal royale honey oud um i want delina exclusive uh amouage uh sunshine woman those are kind of like the main ones that i'm really focused on getting somewhere in the near future definitely want to check those ones out do you love to cook and if so what's your favorite dish um i actually do enjoy cooking i like creating uh so for me do like coming up with uh kind of dishes that my family enjoys i enjoy doing that i would say probably greek is my favorite um yeah greek or italian um but probably Greek would be the one that I, I like doing the most. But yeah, I, I really do enjoy kind of putting things together, creating uh, meals in my mind, uh, having people over where I've come up with a whole entire meal, desserts too. Although I don't enjoy baking desserts uh, and I definitely don't enjoy cleaning up after myself. <laughs> uh, what would you do if all your perfume disappears or someone steals them? Well, I'd probably be upset, <laughs> like definitely I'd be upset. Um, I would start again. The first fragrance that I would probably repurchase, uh, I'd probably go with an all round fragrance. So I'd either probably pick Coco Mademoiselle or I would pick Alien. <laughs> kind of like diametrically opposed there, but I'd either pick uh, Coco Mademoiselle or Alien. Oh, maybe I'd get go with L'Entredee. L'Entredee, I think I would actually pick L'Entredee as my first perfume if I, all of my perfumes disappeared. The reason being is L'Entredee, you can wear it during the day, it's like kind of joyful and stuff, uh, but it's also a little bit more like kind of sensual as opposed to Coco Mademoiselle. I don't find Coco Mademoiselle overly sensual. 
uh, like an evening perfume, but L'Entre D can really do both. So as a multitasker, I'd probably pick L'Entre D first. Yeah, I think so. Next question, love for fragrances is an expensive hobby. How do you plan on expanding on new bottles? First of all, I would love PR. So like Fragrance Dubois, they sent me two phenomenal bottles. I really appreciated that because then I could review them on the channel. Um, as far as uh, getting new fragrances, I'm actually really, uh, like I haven't bought any for quite some time. I look for sales. Uh, so I always look for sales, look at the discount websites, um, you know, buy them discounted whenever possible. Um, I also sell any fragrances that I don't like. So I've got uh, several actually that I'm selling right now just on Facebook uh, for like super cheap. It, we don't have Mercari, uh, so that kind of stinks. So sell them and then buy more perfumes with the money that I get from there. Other than that, I like try to budget very carefully because I'm not into going into debt over perfume. So uh, I definitely want to be careful. And I think at this stage of my perfume journey, uh, I, I've really slowed down in the perfume uh, purchasing because I've got enough in my collection that it's got to be super special in order for me to want to include it in my collection. Uh, it's got to wow me. So there's lots that I think are really nice, like for instance, My Way. I think it's a beautiful perfume, but I've got perfumes that kind of fit that category already. So I really don't feel like I have a need for it because it's it's okay, it's beautiful, like it's nice, but it's not wowing me. So at this point, I wouldn't purchase it. That may change as I go along, but so far there's been nothing currently that's really catching my attention. Um, yeah, and and there's still lots of perfumes I need to explore, but until, uh, until I really love something, I'm not gonna put it into my collection, so I'm not wasting my money. Next question is, how long have you been a serious frag head? It's, a, it's only been about three years for me. So it was when I turned 50. Well, so I guess, yeah, it'll be three years in February. <laughs> so two and a half, two and three quarters. Um, so yeah, it was when I turned 50, I started looking at perfumes and had the epiphany. Because before that, I was always trying to look for a signature scent. And all of a sudden I realized I can't pick a signature scent. Uh, there's too many there's too many and so then it I started on a journey and really started to enjoy learning about perfume and uh, all of that and that's kind of how I went deep into the fragrance and really really enjoy it it's so fun uh, it's so fun to learn about new perfumes and to sniff different things and to actually cultivate uh, my nose is kind of fun <laughs> cultivate as in like philosophically not <laughs> yeah <laughs> next question do you enjoy reading if so what's your favorite book and why uh, yes I do enjoy reading although I don't do near enough of it uh, lately I would say that I have two favorite authors the first one is Stephen Lawhead he writes kind of fantasy books so like I'm gonna talk from a, a fictional perspective Stephen Lawhead really enjoy his books, especially he wrote a series called um, The Songs of Albion, I think. I'll leave it, I'll, like I'll put a picture up here. Uh, really enjoyed that series of books. It was my favorite from his. Uh, and then I really love Michael O'Brien. He's a Canadian author. Uh, he wrote um, Father Elijah, The Plague Journals, Eclipse of the Sun. Those are my three favorite from him. Uh, he does this whole entire series of books called The Children of the Last Days, and they're all slightly connected. Uh, the three that I mentioned definitely are. Love, love, love uh, that series of books. Um, as far as nonfiction is concerned, I really don't enjoy reading nonfiction, but I do read it. Um, but I haven't read anything uh, like that was majorly noteworthy uh, over the past little while. So yeah, my favorite fictional uh, authors would be Michael O'Brien and Stephen Lawhead. Love them. And the rest of the question is, uh, why do you really enjoy those ones? And so for me, um, both of them are so different. The one is fantasy. The other one is kind of like, uh, it would be set in uh, like kind of like the near, near future. 
Um, I, I like them both because they make me, th there's little nuggets of truth, even though it's fiction, little nuggets of truth that really spur me on uh, to grow as a person. Um, yeah, so even though they're fiction, I feel like I always am mining for the nuggets in fiction, uh, and that speaks to me actually a lot more a lot of times than a nonfiction book. I saw that you recommend JPG Classic Essence. Have you ever tried the Intense version? Uh, no, I haven't. I am going to go check that one out because I am actually really curious now. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll check it out soon. Next question, has your t scent taste changed since you were ill? Um, also, how are you feeling? Uh, so no, I wouldn't say that my scent taste has changed since I was ill. Uh, definitely lost my scent, uh, or the ability to smell for, I don't know, it was about two, three weeks, I think. Um, that said, um, I couldn't wear a lot of perfumes to begin with. They just all made me feel sick to my stomach. So for about a month, the only thing that I seemed to be able to wear was Mon Curlon. I don't know why, but I just, I loved that one. Uh, I just really enjoyed wearing that one. So that was the only one that I could almost stomach for whatever reason. But now, uh, no, my, my scent, uh, my scent taste hasn't, is, is the same as it was before. I still struggle, um, with kind of my bronchial area, uh, giving me, like, if I'm not taking my cortisone, uh, spray, it, it starts to get kind of congested. And I also, I didn't talk about it in my COVID video, but after COVID, um, it was about two weeks after I was home from the hospital, all of a sudden, all the lymph nodes on the left-hand side of my face swole up so badly. Uh, at first I thought I had a strained muscle from coughing, uh, but then it progressively got worse until I was having a hard time actually being able to talk because my jaw was hurting so bad, my ear, and then uh, into like underneath my tongue. So essentially it was my saliva glands and my lymph nodes just went crazy. And so the pain was horrendous, like such bad pain. So they put me on a major anti-inflammatory and um, muscle relaxants and uh, I still struggle with that. So if I don't take the anti-inflammatory, uh, especially just at the back of my throat, there's some sort of node back there that starts swelling. It's bothering me today over the past few days and my ear starts hurting quite a lot. So still have those things. Um, so yeah, technically, technically still uh, struggling but as far as energy and that sort of thing I would say I'm pretty much like 95% so way way better <laughs> way better hallelujah I'm so thankful for that so yes next question what's your earliest scent memory my earliest scent memory is of my mom uh, not my mom <laughs> say about her purse well two things from my mom this is so weird okay the first one is her purse I loved smelling her purse she always had a leather purse and so I smelled leather uh, a little hint of cinnamon because sometimes she'd have big red in there or mint uh, or a combination of cinnamon and mint so cinnamon mint and leather from my mother's purse um, I loved sniffing that. I love the smell of leather. Uh, so I loved smelling her purse and it smelled, to me, it smelled like her. Uh, for whatever reason, her purse was associated with her person. Uh, so yeah, uh, leather, mint, and just a hint of cinnamon. Um, and then the other thing, which is so creepy, <laughs> so creepy and kind of embarrassing as I loved smelling my mom's sandals. For the same reason it smelled kind of like just earthy uh probably from her feet <laughs> like it's so embarrassing uh her feet and the smell of the leather like i'm actually blushing uh i loved that smell combination so like sometimes i'd sniff her sandal <laughs> leather being the primarily or the leather being the prominent note what is uh, something else you love and are passionate about? Uh, kind of talked about that. I think the biggest thing for me is I really uh, love God. 
<laughs> that would be my biggest love. Uh, you know, really my spirituality and walking, uh, walking that out um, would be the thing that I'm the most passionate about. So yeah, uh, God, the things of God, um, you know, trying to walk uh, as best I can as a person that shines the light of Christ and you know is a positive light uh, and shows love like uh, that's what I'm probably the most passionate th passionate about and I'm also passionate about people so um, you know I want to see people grow and be all they can be I care about where people are at uh, and when God puts a person in my path I take it seriously and I, I want to, uh, yeah, I just want to be, a, h however I can be a benefit or a blessing uh, in someone's life, that's, that's what I'd be passionate about. Uh, next question, would you rather take a trip to outer space or the bottom of the ocean? Probably neither because they both make me feel a little panicky, especially space. Like, I'm not even a fan of science fiction. It creeps me out. The thought of, like, imploding, I, I'm not into it. Uh, and the thought of being crushed underwater, I'm not into it. But if I had to choose between those two, I would definitely choose, um, I would choose uh, 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 bottom of the ocean if I could see, because I think it, like the creatures and stuff would be really cool there. Uh, so from that perspective, I would pick the bottom of the ocean. What I do wish is that I could just teleport though. Like I wish I could go like this and be somewhere else. Like. France or Italy or uh, you know Spain or or UK or Egypt wherever like I, I wish I could do that that would be really fun <laughs> does your significant other or someone close to you support your passion in perfume uh, do they like it when I buy more um, my husband uh, is my significant other and he uh, is a very supportive person. Uh, anything that I really uh, pursue, he's on board with. So I really appreciate that. Uh, that said, like if there's a major purchase, I always discuss it with him beforehand. That's just what we do is we discuss stuff like that. I don't want to keep any secrets from him. Uh, but also because I'm on YouTube, we've come to an agreement that I can purchase fragrances. Like, not that he signed off on it. Like, we mutually agreed, okay, I'll buy fragrances here and there, uh, obviously for reviewing purposes and to grow the channel. So he's supportive and I'm very thankful for that. Yeah, he's, he's one of the more supportive people I, I know. Uh, he's never ever felt threatened if I have any success in any capacity uh, and has always pushed me to be my best uh, not in a like not in a horrible way like he's just a very I think encouraging person so I'm really really thankful for him and that's it those are the questions so um, if you have questions from the questions please feel free to leave them in the comments and I would be happy to answer them. I hope that you enjoyed this, something different. Uh, you get to know me a little bit better. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. So have an amazing week and we'll talk to you soon.